Hello, my Habibis. Unfortunately, I have some sad news. While trying to clean my computer and to get rid of old files, I accidentally permanently deleted some footage from old campaigns. Permanently deleting two campaigns from the record books. Those campaigns being my Austria and my Hungary campaign from earlier this year. But it's moments like this that we can have our biggest learning opportunity. And I really, really, ever since last year, back in August, wanted to be a consistent YouTuber, but I've struggled to do so. Now, a new age of absolute Habibi content begins. Starting today, I will post at least three videos a week, or I will make myself bald, and I will stay bald unless I am consistent with three videos a week. I've begun training a new editor, Paradoxical. And due to popular demand, I now have a Twitch VODs YouTube channel where you can watch my Twitch VODs directly on YouTube without having to deal with the crappy Twitch player. Check that out, link is in the description. My Twitter is also there because I'm also going to be active on there as well. So, Muscovy, the nation that most commonly forms Russia and EU4 multiplayer, which also starts as a tribute of the Great Horde. And yes, the Great Horde was a player in this MP. Since Muscovy starts with a five-year truce with Great Horde, we are forced to pay tribute to Great Horde in those five years, where he made us pay mill points. He rushed Ryazan while I rushed Kazan. I didn't want to rush into Ryazan since Ryazan is almost mostly flat terrain, and the key to fighting Great Horde in the early game, or any Horde in general, is to not take battles on flat terrain, because you're going to take devastating losses. After the initial truce is over, I removed my tribute status and that started another 5 year truce. And immediately after that 5 year truce was over, Great Horde attacked us. The battle was very close and we ended up winning, but we took a lot of debt that we had to recover from. We recovered our economy through conquest of AIs that surrounded us, but it did leave us considerably behind the Sweden and Polish player when it came to build up. And for some reason, the Manchu player had snaked all the way to Transoxiana. Left us with three potential player enemies on the horizon. Sweden, Poland, and Manchu. What was next for Muscovy in this campaign? Find out in this video. Our boys playing as Muscovy. Continuing the Muscovy campaign, guys. And I'm really excited for this one. Today, we're probably going to do a lot of buildup unless we get attacked by someone like Poland or Sweden. Maybe even the Ottomans. But yeah, it's going to be a buildup session today, boys. And I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it. Diplomacy was the key here. We needed to build up and our enemies wanted to stop us before we could form Russia. So, it was time to do diplomacy. What about Manchu? Um, we are still a while away from conflict for Manchu, guys. You guys just want me to have conflict with players. I mean, I get it. It's the most exciting part of the game is when we're fighting player wars. I really get it. For streamer viewers, I completely get it. That's the most interesting part. That's why you watch the stream is to watch player wars. But hey, guys, it's better here we build up. And this Muscovy is so nice that I don't feel like inting it. This could be a top one. I don't... I don't go into games, I should say this, I don't go into games with the goal of being top 1 GP. I think that's cringe. But, I think this is a potentially rank 1 GP Russia domination game. So, I think we should focus on scaling. Can I reach 250k? Let's see, in, in the end of this session, this is session 2 right now, if you're watching this on YouTube. Right now we're in session 2 of gameplay. Can we reach 250k max manpower by the end of this session? Just to keep in mind, we have zero man we have one manpower building. We went quantity ideas, and we are close to forming Russia. We will be forming Russia in this session. So will we do it, chat? Do you think we can do it? Successfully made a peaceful border deal with Poland, described by this line. And Sweden had assured us that there was no bad blood between us. It's on, dude. Fish? This is Sweden. How you doing, bro? I'm doing pretty good. You sound a little sick. Are you all right? 
Yeah, you're just a little sick. It's fine. He's always sick. <laughs> I got the water. Did you sick like two weeks ago as well, or so? Like three weeks? No, no, that's like two months. Everyone's ago, getting like... sick, dude. I'm finally getting better after like one month of having a cold. So, um, how's your nation? How's Moscow doing? It's doing really good, actually. I was just wanted to oh. tell you, I'm cool with you, dude. That Hope king. You know, Hope that you king is. It's, uh... event. it's event. It's event. Is it normally construction cost too? No. Yes. Oh, he's just lucky. Is, yeah, isn't he scripted? One of them? He's scripted, but I don't think his characteristic is... Yeah, no, I don't think it is either. What's the king? He's, uh, it's Ivan the Fourth. He has architecture visionary. Oh, yeah. Unless that's Thank historical. <laughs> I didn't know Ivan Isn't built a bunch Ivan of... Ivan Terrible? It is Ivan Terrible, yes. And we form Russia. And with the formation of Russia, we now have this decision as part of the Domination DLC that came out last year to either strengthen the serfdom in our nation or to try to modernize as fast as possible. In this stage of the game, I chose to make serfdom more prevalent in our nation. Yes, we do need modernization in order to continue on our mission tree. However, in this stage of the game, I prioritized manpower over just rushing our mission tree as some of the requirements weren't possible anyways. But by choosing to enforce serfdom, we give the possibility for the serfs to uprise later on and in that point, we can remove serfdom and try to modernize the state. Once we fully modernize, we can get really cool bonuses like permanent dev cost, western unit pips, and permanent 5% discipline as well as unique government bonuses that give us infantry combat ability and admin efficiency. I have low cost advisors right now, but that's because I'm trying to build right now. More than dev, I need buildings because I lack severely buildings. By the way, if you're wondering, usually I'd run higher level advisors for our nation of our size. We should also improve relations with the vassals that we want to integrate. We'll integrate those two guys so we can get the subjects of Muscovy. Okay, man. Fish. Yeah. I'm gonna need you to remove that uh, merchant out of. I'm gonna need you to remove that merchant out of my node, or I will deck for max money. Pretty sure it's just gonna steal like a, pretty much the same. Let's see. Let's see. Take it out and we'll see. You're gonna six percent. That's big. Work, that literally gave me two ducats. That's so big for me. It was, it, yeah, it was. That's <laughs> actually so big for me. It was. It was I'm nearly there. Point. Did you just see that fish? Thirty-seven k Streltsy out of thin air. I have that power. By showing my strength to Sweden. He questioned my power, and I didn't want to have someone on my border calling me weak, especially at this point in time. So I did the only rational thing a true Russian czar would do, and I declared war on Sweden to exploit him for money. Who is you know this? what? Wait, we should go a different channel. Let's go different channel. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's for you I'm questioning my strength. Oh, are these Hungarian troops are too strong. Huh? How that's for you questioning my strength. Like was questioning your strength? Fish. I don't like being questioned. If I, if I, could take... I just decked on you. I just decked on you. I think it's deck. There's hunger. Should be. Do you believe me now? Do you believe me now? <clears throat> you had quite a few troops, it seems. Maybe one or two thousand million. A chillion. This without war reps. This is for all the money you stole. <laughs> stole. Let's see what was money did I steal for three a month. Okay. That's not acceptable. Max money, you're richer than me. Uh, this has to be a long war. It's not gonna I'm be not long. Rich. It's not gonna be long. Gonna I'm not even. Down. I'm not even at force limit, dude. So, because I don't have a good general. You have a six shock, and I have a shit shock. Six shock? If you make me do this more, I'm gonna ask for more. You know that, right? But 
Didn't you ask for max money for reps? No, I asked, I asked without war reps. It's Viborg and max money. Fucking no war reps? No war reps. But now, now if you're gonna make it long, I'm gonna take more land. I'm gonna take all of Finland and war reps. Uh, take and release please, Finland. Please, please, please. Hmm. Let me see what. <clears throat> Can I look at the deal? I think I have to. Uh, I don't want to make this a long war. I don't want to take mercs. I don't even have to take mercs. I have so much manpower. How <laughs> was? Oh my god. That's it, dude. We Borg. Aye, aye, aye. We Borg. Max money. Okay. Wait, not you. So yeah, we just exploited another player for max money. If anyone asks, we were just LARPing as Habiban. The terrible. Oh. Why am I competing with Burma for number one GP? Burma number one GP? What's going on there? Can we gain this Burma? When in Burma? We ended the session exceeding our goal of max manpower, but now we had a pesky Chinese nation to our south that we had to deal with, taking the Samarkand node from us. Once we controlled this area, a huge amount of wealth would come to us. And money was so important. As with Russia, we have so many tiles and provinces that we enter what I call the infinite scale of Russia. So much buildup can be done on this nation, so much potential, but will we ever reach that potential? It's time! Push forward! Get the right music for this. Oh, they're already here! They're already here! They're already here! Go, more troops! They're already here! Bring the hordes! We had defeated the Qing, but now there was another problem. It was the Poles. The Poles are scary, dude. They're 70% stronger than us. This haunt guy is no joke. So the infinite scale of Russia continued. We continued down our mission tree, getting a monopoly on vodka. eventually even got the vodka of the crown government reform which gives us goods produced and makes grain more valuable in terms of production efficiency however it does make ideas a little bit more expensive and gives us the decision to get money in exchange for devastation on grain provinces next we developed our copper provinces luckily around this time sweden also increased the price of copper using his mission tree making our copper also more valuable and even though our economy was scaling quite significantly it was still a lot of build-up that we had to do in order to completely get our full potential with this many provinces it always felt like there was something to build there was something to do even better and there was something to always develop 
Our idea build was focused on mana generation and mana efficiency, which I kind of regretted in this campaign, and I wished I had gotten something to help with the build up, or to help with this infinite scaling that we could do as Russia. It was also at this point that we started getting Surf Revolts. I'd no longer take advantage of the huge manpower boost if I wanted to eventually modernize. And I did want to modernize because that's the only way we can progress our mission tree. So we revoke serfdom in Russia, getting a new middle class, giving us even more tech cost and idea cost. All our modifiers, we had minus 35 tech cost, minus 25 idea cost. We were able to quickly modernize due to this new middle class. However, now our merchant guilds had a strong power and we're reducing our manpower by minus 20%. The guild does not take your order. Now the only thing that we needed to complete our mission tree was to get 50 absolutism as well as complete the modernization of our state. Once we do that, we would unlock secret missions or missions that are hidden on the mission tree. We did eventually attack Ching again, but Ching, not wanting to hold the Samarkand trade node anymore, decided to just give up and give us our peace deal, helping us secure more of the Samarkand trade node. Now that we were fully modernized, we had access to some really powerful missions, like a mission that gives global possible number of buildings, or another mission that gives permanent reinforce speed, or another mission that gives western unit types and 5% discipline. Also got the Russian Empire government type instead of Tsardom. It did make us lose the Streltsy, but now we had new regiments that gave us 10% infantry combat ability. And when activated, it was a total of 40 infantry combat ability. Even though our income was doing really good at this point, we still needed so much to get to our full potential. We were lacking so much in manpower buildings, in force limit buildings, and universities. Before we could reach our full potential, we were surprise attacked by Poland, who now wanted to end the years of neutrality between our nations. And this is where this video ends on this cliffhanger. Will we be able to take on this very powerful Poland? Well, you're gonna have to figure out in the next part, which comes out this Friday in the evening European time and in the morning Pacific Standard Time. That's my time zone, by the way, where we will continue playing this Russia into the very late game of EU4 even when it gets super laggy and continue the infinite scale of Russia, the infinite scaling of Russia. Thank you, my direct supporters, my beloved Hardbam, Shogos, RVR, Mason Adruska, Fields, Djax, Nexos, Endless Knights, Zorovia, Fabulous Nail, Beyond, Tonics, Lawfer, Kolkarp, Johan, Asklon, Dion, Mason, Deshaun Moore, Trevor Kosman, Yos, Savoria, Daniel, Lubsiek and Chain Altair. Sorry if I butchered your name, guys. I'm really bad at pronouncing things. You should already know that by then because you guys are my number one fans. And thank you. Please subscribe. Become a Habibi today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Put on the bell notification because three videos a week coming until at least I get 100,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for watching.